is the Celebrity Afterlife Report podcast. Hello! You guessed it. It's time for another edition of the Celebrity Afterlife Report, the only show on the internet that gives you the most up-to-the-minute gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities. I am your host, the Celebrity Medium. Five, four, three, two, one, let's go! If you've listened to last week's report, and if you haven't, shame on you. You know that things in the relationship between aviator Charles Lindbergh and former Nazi dictator Adolf Hitler have taken an interesting turn? While Lindbergh is continuing with his plans to build a whites-only community in the next world, using the blueprints originally developed by singer-actress Judy Garland to be a feminist enclave, Hitler has publicly denounced the whole concept. Hitler, who has shaved off his iconic mustache, claims to be a changed man due to his time spent in the afterlife forest contemplating the evil he committed while on the earthly plane. As you would imagine, many in the next world are skeptical about Hitler's new leaf turning, but the former Fuhrer seems to be trying to do everything he can to convince them he's sincere. According to several sources, he has been living 24-7 on a small tent just outside the walls of the city-to-be, with signs denouncing racism and hatred in German and English. Afterlife news sources report that a crowd of both supporters and people opposing his new attitude has been growing around his tent home. Every morning, a car with blacked out windows assumed to be carrying Lindbergh arrives at the construction site, but no one has actually seen the first man to fly solo across the Atlantic at the location or anywhere else since Hitler announced his opposition to the project. Guards stand at the entrance to the town's site to keep protesters at a distance, and they refuse to make any statements about the project or what they may know about Lindbergh's involvement with it. Other than chanting and singing by both sides, there's been no violence between the pro and anti Lindbergh project supporters. Now there's a rumor going around that Hitler has begun a fast to call attention to what he has referred to as a quote, town built on hate, unquote, but I don't have confirmation of that at this time. Now just before recording this edition of the report, I got word that the Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., currently touring as a soul singer using the name Doc Martin, has issued a public statement in support of Hitler's opposition to Lindbergh's plans. Another ongoing story we've been following involves former Apple CEO Steve Jobs and world-famous painter Jackson Pollock. Jobs commissioned Pollock to produce some giant-sized murals for his environment project under the assumption that the paintings would resemble the infamous drip paintings that Pollock was famous for on the earthly plane. But instead, Pollock painted some very explicit female nudes, which enraged control freak Jobs. Pollock, in turn, became angry when Jobs had them taken down. The two agreed to a compromise wherein Jobs would have the paintings installed on the wall of a building he owns next to a busy Next World Highway. Now, however, comes word that Pollock went to the site to admire his handiwork, only to find the building's walls unadorned by his art. An enraged Pollock reportedly stormed into the building to confront Jobs. Pushing past the receptionist, the painter cornered Jobs in a hallway demanding to know what Steve had done with the murals. According to my sources, Jobs led him around to the back of the building where the paintings were hanging on the wall, which faces an alleyway in the blank side of another building. Jobs reminded Pollock that the artist had said he only promised to produce some murals and never explicitly said they would be drip paintings. So in retaliation, Jobs had told Pollock 
that the murals would be hung on the outside of his building, but hadn't specifically promised that it would be the front of the building. According to a source, Pollock was livid, but couldn't really do anything as there was security present to prevent a physical confrontation. The guards escorted Pollock from the premises, so at least for now, the paintings will hang where virtually no one will see them. Several weeks ago, we revealed that former U.S. Senator Ted Kennedy had agreed to star in a series of porn movies, the first of which was tentatively titled, Mr. Kennedy Comes to Washington. At the time of that report, the movie was in pre-production, and the name of his female co-star had yet to be revealed. I am now told by my sources that the politiporn is currently being shot, and that the female lead is none other than 50 sex symbol Jane Mansfield. Before her tragic car accident that caused her transition to the afterlife, Mansfield was sometimes referred to as the poor man's Marilyn Monroe. Although in real life, Jane was very intelligent, her character was the stereotypical big-breasted dumb bleach blonde. Asked by a Next World Entertainment reporter why she agreed to star in a porno movie, Mansfield responded, if it's good enough for a candidate, it's good enough for me. According to a press release, the movie will be released sometime in the next few months. There is no word at this time about what the Senator's brothers, John and Robert, think about their siblings' unusual change of career. Actor Abe Vigoda is best known for his roles in The Godfather and on the TV show Barney Miller. Although at the time of this recording, Mr. Vigoda is still on the earthly plane, as we have reported in the past, there is a man in the afterlife who has made something of a career out of pretending to be him. No one seems to know the man's true identity, but he signs autographs as Vigoda, and even makes personal appearances on shows as the actor. So brazen has he become that he's taken his impersonation to a whole new level. After a recent television appearance where he convinced the show's unsuspecting host that he was the actor, a reporter collared him outside the studio and confronted him about his ruse. The imposter not only had the nerve to insist that he is a Vagoda, he went on to accuse the real, very much alive Vagoda of being a fake who was impersonating him. The reporter said that he became very indignant at the accusation that he was a fraud and said that he can't wait until the Earth plane Abe Vagoda transitions to the next world so he can have a face-to-face -face confrontation with him. You know, like I often say, no matter how strange things in the afterlife are, it seems they can always get just a little bit stranger. And on that note, we lock up the Celebrity Afterlife Report studio for another week. Please come back next week when I'll have another roundup of up-to-the-minute gossip about all your favorite deceased celebrities. Until then, please tell your friends that the report is available for free on iTunes. I am the Celebrity Medium. Thanks for listening. been listening to the celebrity afterlife report podcast to ask a question about your favorite deceased celebrity call 818-3-MY-DREAM 818-3-MY-DREAM 818-369-3732